Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Tahir Moore. And I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet, You Scary. We back in the studio. Hey, man, very limited. Well, I guess this isn't really the studio anymore, huh? No, we got a... Uh, well, no, we're going to keep this one too. Oh, it's, it's both? Yeah, we're going to keep all three locations. So we'll keep Transit, the original, mm -hmm. keep this one, and then the new warehouse too. So probably one of... This will be like for... So we're in one-third. Yeah. We're in one-third yeah, one of the operation. That's crazy as hell to think that, like, that's what we're doing mm -hmm. and building. Yay. Hey. I, I and see everybody it. got their own stuff too. Pat did a stream last night from seven to ten on a video game. Partnered with a company. They're paying him. Dude, stream you're, you're elements. Paid to play video games. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun. You I, I would have never thought in school this is what I would be doing. Or that's what someone would nah. be doing. And what's crazy about that is we shot um, since ten a.m. that day. And I remember we I took the break. We did the 21 questions for yep. uh, on Damn Internet, You Scary. Shout out to everybody who uh, showed up for that. It was a lot of fun, too, guys. It was a lot of fun. And then that was over at 6, and then my stream was from 7 to 11. So it was kind of like a 12, 13-hour with a couple That's breaks crazy. thing. But it still didn't feel like work afterwards. Yeah. You know, it was, like, tired, but it wasn't, like, how, a, you know, I assume, like, a minor gets home. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because <laughs> you, like, when I film, like, today's going to be a long day. We're going to shoot. This right here, then we have to shoot squad cast right mm -hmm. after this, and then we're gonna try to shoot three or four episodes of uh, uh, chit chat and cereal. Then I have to um, um, zoom with the homies after that. Like trying to keep the energy up, especially as a host, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like literally, I'm spent. So uh, I don't know how you did yesterday because that was fucking intense. He told me <laughs> before we did the twenty when we were setting up the twenty one questions, he told me he was gonna be filming all day. I was like, how the fuck? I was like, you wanna do it Saturday? He's like, nah, I pushed through. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't enough days, man. But it's, it's not, dude. It's fun. It's fun. But um as you as you guys can see, we are uh we're we're live today. Yeah. We are uh, we are in person risking the Rona. I don't know how long we're gonna be able to do these in, in person until things really settle down. So mm -hmm. when we can do it, uh, we try to take advantage of it and you know, I, the, the the energy is definitely different. I had to shoot um a couple of working this hard virtually with people mm -hmm. and it was still great mm -hmm. but the energy is always different in person so oh yeah 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 for sure i'm glad um, that we got it off though but in terms of the genres you guys are putting a lot of good ones in new orleans bounce old school hip-hop the one i've never seen before was from kiyomi lullaby i saw that never I seen that before uh, yeah it doesn't uh, even really come across as a genre so that's yeah, very interesting I'm, I'm i'm up for trying i am too i'm definitely up for trying so uh I like that, and Kiyomi was one of the guests on 21 Questions uh, yesterday, which would have been Sunday, because uh, mm -hmm. we filmed this on Monday. So um, I'm I'm up for trying Lullaby, if you if you want to. Do you know any lullabies besides Rockabye, baby? You know what's crazy? That's that's exactly where I went first. Bum, 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 bum. That's not Rockabye, baby. Bum, 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 what is that? Bum, bum, that's not Rockabye, bum, baby. It's not? No, rockabye, rockabye, baby, on the tree. Oh shit! What was I humming? I don't know. That's another one though. Go to sleep, little baby. Do do do. And twinkle, twinkle, little star. And itsy bitsy spider. Those oh, I guess we do know a couple. Yeah, I guess we do know a lot of little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was go to sleep. Um. Okay. Uh. Say goodnight. Go to sleep, little baby. Okay. I'll do the beat. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 All right, here it is. Intro song, Lullaby <clears throat> Style. Thanks to Kiyomi. Um, we're going to give this a try. All right, here we go. Pass on the beat. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take you guys back to 2000 when people had random baby noises on the track. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, bling, bling. <laughs> bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, bling, bling. Here we go. Bling, bling, bling. Let it come around. Bling, 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 bling. Say goodnight. Turn on your nightlight. And bling, bling, bling. On the internet. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, 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 and bling, don't bling, get the bed bling, wet. Watch the mouse bling, eating bling, by bling, cats, 
and watch a dog chew on the bed. Watch a freaky girl named Mary scream out them in and that you scary. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded way more like Elmo. You sound like <laughs> Elmo with a smoke with a smoker's cough. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, "Have I ever imitated a baby?" <laughs> I was like, "I don't even know what to do." <laughs> I had to get out of that fast. I was like, "I felt this is this is about to go bad." So let me hurry up and hit this eject. All right, Mary and Scary, we're out. <laughs> Every now and then, there's a dairy. <laughs> Somebody said, "Here comes the Mary." You got that right. You know it's coming. Shit, had to tickle get up out me, of there. Tickle me, Patrick. Trick dolls will not happen. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Tickle me, Patrick fun. is hilarious, dog. <laughs> All right, man. A lot happening. A lot. There is a lot happening. It's going on, bro. Before we get to the obvious, I want to talk about something that uh, is is very, very much uh, prominent in. I wouldn't even say the black community. I just mm -hmm. want. I would just say the community. Period. In terms of sex. Um, choking women during sex. Yes. For some reason in high school or, or I don't know when you first hear about it, you're just like, well, you do that. Oh, that's crazy. But then growing up, you, it's almost like every woman wants that. Everything is taboo as a child, bro. Even these girls. Rem remember. The shy girls. Remember when, I don't know if it was like that when you were coming up. When I was coming in, the, in, in high school, eating the box was definitely frowned upon. She could suck my name when I ain't eating no Gucci. It was like, hmm. I never understood it. I, I thought that was kind of one-sided and very uh, misogynistic, and to, to be frank. Hmm. Um, but a lot of people, I saw this on Twitter, thank Lil Wayne for normalizing eating the box. Cause he I was do like, remember that. Yeah, he, he was one of the first rappers that really pushed forward. He was one of the first rappers we saw mainstream with the, the face tattoos, with the piercings, the eyebrows. All of that. He normalized hey. a lot. Lil Wayne, before he, he got crazy crazy, mm -hmm. was a trendsetter in Absolutely. a lot of different ways, bro. It was right before the lime green Uggs in mm -hmm. YOLO. I think that was the time we were just like, you know, I think I'm my own person now. <laughs> <laughs> when Truck Fit came out, we were like, all right, Wayne. Because before Truck Fit, I was in high school. It was Lil Wayne and Pharrell. Yeah, and that I was it. That, that's who taught you how to dress. That's who taught you the style, the eclectic stuff. Then yeah. there was like the, you know, the other stuff. But yeah, then there was that, that cutoff limit where you're like, ah, I think I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm grown now. But now like it is so, so common. And so, especially as adults, like now it's like, I mean, get get the consent first. You like even if it's just verbals, you ask like, so do you like to be choked? Like, yeah, yeah. One hand or two. It's like, well, two if you're hitting it from the back. One if you're on top, missionary style. Uh, fellas, there is a technique to choking. Uh, you want to choke on the sides. Don't crush the windpipe. You put too much pressure on the run pipe. Uh, just the webs, yeah, guy. Yeah, just 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 right here. Right? If you do you this, you're a psychopath. Just, yeah, this yeah. is unnecessary. It's proper ways to do everything, even with pulling the hair. Like if if someone has long hair, try to grip all the hair. And and twist and then pull so that way it's like an even pull because if you just grab a pull hand, and hair pull, like pull a key, it, yeah, you you, <laughs> you you can pull the hair off. So it's proper ways to do all of this type of stuff, but also just have the conversation. Don't don't try to bust out like debut <laughs> new moves and you ain't had the conversation with the person. Like it's it's have the conversation. Make sure that's that a funny way of like putting it because you do. It does feel like a debut mm -hmm. because unless you're just creative in the moment, you're like, let me try this. It's more than likely something you saw in porn that you're like, I'm going to break this out. I'm going to try yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, debut, because <laughs> it is it is going on in, in, in the dude's head right before he's like, oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try it. Um, to anybody who may be watching in the UK, um, what Tahir said was actually absolutely right. Um, because for some reason uh choking during sex without consent may now be illegal under new domestic abuse law in UK. Oh snap. Which is pretty in, in, it's pretty insane, right? Um but I mean it's makes sense. Um uh, but like he said it's way better to ask before Absolutely. way before. Don't Have ask. A conversation. Him, don't ask him during sex. That's weird. Like can I can I choke you? You stroke and be like can, can I, I choke you? Can I choke you? <laughs> like what? It's can weird. I Can I apply a little pressure? <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways to look crazy during this, uh, which is why we need the, uh, the woman's help. You know, it'd be nice of you guys to speak up, maybe even do it yourself. 
Um, but it says choking during sex without consent may be considered illegal during a new domestic abuse law in the UK. Lawmakers are currently proposing for the sexual act to become a specific criminal offense after new evidence shows that one in five sexual assault victims are strangled by their partner. That's crazy, because I always thought that stabbing somebody was the most like heinous crime of, of passion. But I guess choking is pretty... It's always that. Yeah. Whenever yeah. there's so many, I mean, I'm, according to the weird uh, TV crime dra dramas I'd be watching, but it's like they're always found strangled. And I think that is, you're, it, it, you would think that a stab would be yeah. super weird, but like to for you to just do it and like, they always say the same thing. Like, I, I want to see the light go off. It's yeah, like, it's like, that's weird. Bro. What? <laughs> that's weird. That's Very weird, bro, that you think like that. Insanity. But it says that uh, right now, Choking is only punishable under common assault law and carries a maximum of six months behind bars. Maybe that's why they do it. Um, but however, protesters say that domestic abusers are rarely ever prosecuted as they claim their violent choking and throttling are part of consensual sex play. The critically acclaimed series Fifty Shades of Grey have only heightened the play. And I do remember there was like, I forget what year that came out, but there was like a weird shift in sexual aggression when that Man, dropped. That, that, that book and that movie did things to people. They was like, you know what? Maybe I do like being spat on. You know what I mean? You know, a little slapping here and there. All I would say. All the housewives were like, I, I, would, I would like to try these things. <laughs> All I would say is make sure you get that consent. Uh, make sure it is consensual. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is take a gamble on getting some sexy time. Okay, mm -hmm. if you want to gamble, there's ways that you can gamble. You know, you can you could do something like the World Series of Poker. Okay? Oh yeah, you could download that mm -hmm. on your phone and you could play that anytime you want to. Now I don't know if you guys have ever watched the World Series of Poker on TV right. and dream what it's like to win big like the pros, but I play on my phone. Um, mm -hmm. I get into it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and throw these on real quick. Are those the poker glasses? This is it. Let me see the poker face. It's pretty good. That's it. Just no emotion at all. Y'all know pretty I lie good. a lot, so my face can do a lot of that too. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you though. I'm not good. I'm not good at it. I've been trying. <laughs> I've been trying to do Texas Hold'em. Oh, that's but yours. That's, that's the mode you play. That's my game. I actually <laughs> just started playing that. <laughs> not one yet. Well, that's what's dope about the app is you can kind of come into it as a novice. You think you think that the only people that play these are like the the ones that be in illegal gambling rigs every night, smoking cigarettes, doing crazy yeah. amounts of gambling, and it's really not. Like it's it's pretty easy. And I just got tired of seeing. Text the, the the phrase Texas Hold'em and not, not knowing, knowing what it was, to. but it's actually pretty easy. I learned through the app. You pretty much get to like build your hand as you go. But yeah. it's 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 pretty dope. I watched. I I won fifty dollars. Oh well, look. And I'm you. trash. Yeah, I mean, and listen, guys. The official World Series of Poker app lets you play real time poker with mm -hmm. poker fans from around the world. You get to hone your hold'em skills, all right, in virtual cash games and tournaments, play in casino mode, and go up against the house. Or you can connect with Facebook account and set up a virtual table with your friends. So it have multiple possibilities for you mm -hmm. to get better at honing your skills. Uh, and it's as close to the real thing as you can get without the $10,000 buy-in. That's what's really kept me I humble. was scared, yeah. I'm going to tell you what. I've been to Vegas with somebody that really gambles. And when mm -hmm. you really gamble, they lay out the house for you. They they will provide you a driver. They'll put you in a villa, all of that time. Mm -hmm. you spending big bucks, I'm talking about 100000 or more, they lay out the red carpet. Mm -hmm. However, when you're doing on the World Series of Poker, you can lay on your own carpet. Your you don't have carpet. to go nowhere. And you don't have to risk losing $100,000. <laughs> real dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. The World Series of Poker app is a great way to improve your poker skills. And it is free to download. So if you're tired of social distancing, now you can easily set up a virtual poker game with your mm -hmm. friends as the number one poker game. Number World one. Series of pay, uh, Poker always has tons of players online to match up against whenever you want to play. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for all the crazy and fun events coming up around the holidays, too. Best mm -hmm. of all, you get to get one million chips as a bonus gift when you join today. That's right, a million, out, million chips. So what's the holdup? Download World Series of Poker app uh, right now in the Apple App Store or on Google Play and Amazon Now. And don't forget to use our promo code World Series of Poker DIYS for 1 million bonus chips when you sign up. Again, the promo code is actually WSOP, 
D-I-Y-S, and that'll get you one million bonus chips when you download Dang. World Series of Poker app and use the promo code W-S-O-P-D-I-Y-S. We all know how, how, how happy to hear gets when he gets a million chips. <laughs> it's not his first rodeo. <laughs> That's when I won the Lays championship. <laughs> <laughs> had a million, a million plain, a million lightly salted. A million he won that, and he was like, "What cards?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't play no cards. <laughs> oh goodness, that's good. All right, so man, there's no way to not talk about what's going on. Absolutely, on Capitol Hill. We have to address it. Um, so. There's obviously the, the the real, real stuff, which is the Democrats filing an impeachment article accusing Trump of inciting attack on Capitol Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this actually might happen. I yeah. that would be that would be very interesting. But the stuff that people aren't talking about enough is the fact that they found that the rioters smeared poop and pee everywhere. Bro, they were they were wilding out. They were wilding out. Huh? How did that not break the first day, first of all? But what? I mean <sighs> They I mean it was it was it was other pressing items like people actually dying at this riot. Uh let's be honest, man. This, this is more this important. was this was an act of domestic terrorism. Yes. That is exactly what it was. Uh riot is what they were calling uh what people were doing when we were protesting in just of us having justice and liberty and life and not getting killed by the police. Mm-hmm. Rioting is that that was going in stores and potentially taking stuff like this. Someone was killed. All right. Actually, multiple people would, mm-hmm. would have died from this. Mm-hmm. Um, they were defiling government property. Um, One of the guards killed themselves afterwards. Yeah, too. I read that too, bro. It was, it was so much going on, dog. Like this, I've never. I mean, obviously, we've never seen anything like this. We've mm-hmm. never had a president like like Trump. Uh, we never had a president that sides uh, willingly and openly on a side of violence mm-hmm. and contention and racism. Mm-hmm. And it is it is just ridiculous to see in a crazy time to be alive right now. I also want to point out the Stripe, uh, which is a processing company that that processes Trump's payments for his campaign website. They quit him. After everything that happened on Capitol Hill, it's like, bro, we can't be attached. Wow. When you can't get no money no more. Wait, they process his they, payments? They process his payments. So, like, when you go through the Trump campaign website uh-huh. uh, and people donate money, this was the company that was process- oh, processing those payments. Wow. And it's like, yeah, we good, fam. You go ahead and take your little money. Try PayPal now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and people would donate oh, bad, bad bread. So, imagine, like, if a company is like, we don't even want that money. We're good. You know what it is? I think that we're just finally like seeing what the the these weirdos in the comments were capable of this whole time. You know what I mean? Like when we, when BLM was happening, they were in the comments like BLM blah 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 blah. We saw glimpses of them with Karens and and all these people tearing down BLM, but like this is what they did when they were at their most upset and I feel like it wasn't called a terrorist act because it was so weird and and stupid looking. And no, it wasn't called a terrorist act because they were white. Was, yeah, but they were on some was weirdo kidding. shit. And yeah, they, were, like, they were let in and they're smearing poop everywhere. And it's like, but then it's like, okay, obviously this is a Capitol building and people were killed. So this is a terrorist attack. But these, these people are really on some weirdo shit. I'm going to be honest with you poop guys. Poop and pee? Even before <laughs> this happened, um, probably around the time that Trump was elected, I started to look at the American flag and feel some type of way Mm -hmm. and not patriotic, um, but more like it, it, the symbol didn't have the same relevance as it had when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And that could be like, you get older, you learn the truth um, and you realize what the country was really big on. But also it's like, I almost see the American flag the same way I see the the Southern Rebel flag, flag. like it's gotten that bad. It, to me, it is because like yeah. you know what that represents. You know that Trump, with like all of his his fans, uh, the Proud Boys, and all of that, uh, America, mm-hmm. and all of that, like they they are wrapping themselves in Trump banner flags and American flag, mm-hmm. and now it's hard to distinguish who is who. So now I see an American flag, and it's almost like I just immediately 
assume that that person is racist. Mm. And it's, it sucks that because of their affiliation to one person and one political party, it has got to that level. Because before, I, mean, I, I could meet a Republican and we still could have a civil conversation. Right. We have opposing views of you know who should be leading the country, but we could still be civil enough to have a decent conversation. Right. Now, I was driving the other day and this guy had, um, That's this, crazy. this car was like a three-wheeler. And um, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the slingshot. It was it was another one. You want the uh, one wheel in front? No, nah, this one had the one wheel in back. This one was that, but it wasn't it wasn't seems the, dangerous. Yeah, it was it, it was. Um, I was asking him. I was about to ask him, was it an automatic or if it was a stick shift? But when he turned to look at me, he had the Trump hat on. Um, I said, never mind. And I just rolled my window up because uh-huh. I just automatically assume mm-hmm. that he's a bigot. I automatically assume. That he looks at me as lesser than him. I don't see and how you would wear a MAGA hat and still be like really down with BLM or black people in general. I don't. I, I don't yeah. see how that would ever Venn diagram cross. Like, yeah. there's. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't see that either. I don't ever think they intersect. I think that they run. There are two parallel lines that never intersect mm-hmm. because you feel your side is right and we feel what we're fighting for is right. And what yeah. we're fighting for is just. Equality. Mm-hmm. We're not, it's not not more than. It's crazy. <laughs> not not more than. Not treat us better. We're not, equality. We're not That's, even asking for anything else. Yeah. So now <laughs> it's not even like equality plus like government secrets. So like with that mindset, when I see people driving and they have American flags across their dashboard and they have the sticker on their their, their windshield, or even cops. When I see them, because the cops have it, usually American sticker on their, um, their bumper matter. or something like that. Not even a Blue Lives Matter, just an American flag sticker. It makes me feel some type of way. Mm. I definitely have more angst when I see it because I don't know. That has been the symbol yeah. for Trump for so for four years now. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that has transpired throughout that four year, all the transgressions, all the violence, all the bigotry. Now it's hard to distinguish between is this person... A patriot? Do they just love their country, or mm-hmm. do they side with him? And because of that, I'm just like, That's I'd rather crazy. just, I'd rather just stick to myself, bro. That's and really it sucks that we see, I see that flag, and I know I'm not alone. This way, it sucks that I see that flag of the country that I reside in, mm-hmm. and I can't even take pride in it because it has been stained with such negativity. It, it's it's very saddening. So that's really crazy. That's a that's a. That's a wild like observation that the current flag is giving us the same vibes as the Confederate. Because the Confederate flag has been weird, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you grew up learning about the history, and it kind of represented a really racist time and period in, in, in American history. But now it's like our current flag represents like our current time. Yes. And it's like... That is very, very true, and it's it's almost like this was all this has been snowballing forever. But the you know the kneeing from Colin Kaepernick was the one that brought it to a political level, and it's it's crazy how we saw the signs so early mm-hmm. when people flipped out on football players like ah, and then that snowballed into flipping out on Black Lives Matter. It's mm-hmm. like what are y'all really mad at? <laughs> you know what's crazy is that we're 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 currently looking for new places to say Farron and I and um uh this is one area that a couple friends of ours stay in and I I like the houses up there. The prices are, are better because you have to drive further to get into the city. However, the neighborhood is it's mixed, but it's predominantly white. And I'm almost like, I don't want to move there. I'd rather almost pay more to find something to look closer for the drive. But also, where I'm at right now in Glendale, for the most part, I know I know Armenians don't really fuck with black people. I know that, mm-hmm. right? There are some that are cool, that get it, they understand. But there are a lot of Armenians who are just like, they're from the old country and they just have their ways. And they don't, it ain't just black people. They don't really fuck with anybody. Right. right? They fuck with white people because they have to do business sometimes, but they, they look down upon us, right? And I know that. And at least I know the faces of the people that that don't really rock with me like that. Mm. You know, they don't they don't hide it. They don't try to uh, mislead me with it. They don't try to, you know, cover shit with sugar, for lack of better words. I know it. And mm. I would rather know the face uh, of those that are, are, are going to you know, oppose of all my views and all of that than move to a neighborhood uh, and people have people smile in my face. And pretend like we're cool, but then when shit gets down to the to, to the to the nitty gritty, they're not gonna be in support of what mm-hmm. I believe in. Which is which is just as a reminder, equality. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like I would rather like stay with the devil I know than move to one that I don't. You know what I mean? Like 
So wait, are you staying in the Armenian neighborhood then? I might, I might, I might just stay in Glendale because it's like, I, I, at least I know going mm. into what I'm dealing with. I know that you know. What do you mean by you know? Like they just frown at you all the time or what? No, you just like Armenians just don't really don't fuck with nobody outside of Armenia. Like if you go to Glendale, like most of the businesses are there. Uh, when everything was going on this year with BLM, mm. there were no BLM flags flying unless it was a black family's house. Like you mm -hmm. saw a couple things like you know in, in in people's yards and stuff like that. But when uh, the Armenian genocide and everything was going on with them, which yeah. makes sense, yeah. flags everywhere. I'm talking right. about at the 7 Eleven. Now this 7 Eleven that I frequent all the time, it's not owned by Armenians. You know what I'm saying? But because they're in the midst of mm -hmm. this community, they're flying that flag high. You know, hey, you come in here, we welcome you, we sympathize with you. I mm -hmm. saw none of that. Yeah. I saw but, none of that for the BLM movement. But there's a difference between not going out and getting a sign, which is, if, if, if you're not a part of it, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a BLM sign. But that is very, very different than, like, opposing it or walking up to somebody's yard and tearing one down and yeah. being like, That's true. F BLM. You know what I mean? But it's like... It, yeah, they, they they may not have like sh outwardly said it, but that doesn't necessarily mean like it's not it's it's there's like levels to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I agree with what you're saying. It's like you'd rather just be in where you sort of know where it's at, where it's just like no, I'm not really part of that movement, as opposed to like yeah, we love it. We, you know, we support, and it's mm -hmm. not really like that. Yeah. You know? and not only is it not really like that, but this it's the act. It's actually the opposite of that when it comes down to it. Are you gonna be my ally and stand shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. when we're, with me while we're out there marching and protesting for the right to live, for mm -hmm. the right to exist, for the right of fair treatment and equality? Mm -hmm. That's what it really comes down to. Like, don't be an ally when it's convenient behind the computer. Right. Be an ally when we really got to get out there in the streets. So, yeah, I know Armenians ain't gonna do that. Yeah, I, I know they ain't. You know what I'm saying? So, like, at least I know what I'm, I'm dealing with. You know, so I know the disrespect that I'm gonna have to, like engage with and I know how to react with that. But like when you, you move into a new community and you think everybody is like all hunky dory and everybody is all cool and you he he and he he in all in the morning while you're grabbing your paper and then some shit like this happens again, right? And you having a conversation and then the first thing they say, well all he had to do was comply. Wait a minute, motherfucker. For him to have complied and not get shot, he would have had to change his skin color. I and I hate those see, comments. I, I hate. hate I've yet comments. to see a motherfucker that can comply that well. That Should they can turn complied. from black to white. That's so. a chameleon. <laughs> like what the hell? Like yeah, I hate the, those are the worst comments. Like should have complied. Shouldn't have resisted. Shouldn't have ran. Shouldn't yeah. have moved. Like more than likely, somebody who has never been in that situation is saying that. Absolutely, so. they haven't. They don't. So they don't. They don't get it. You know what, man? And and I hate. I hate to harp on, and I, I'm not gonna harp on it because it's like it, it. It's not. This isn't the place for it right now. Uh, it's good to have these conversations. I'm glad that we have a platform that we can have the dialogue with. But it is exhausting, mm -hmm. you know, at times, and so exhausting. It's like, man, talking about it takes a lot out of you. And I just got up. We got a full day of stuff. And if we keep this up, I'm going to have to go take a nap, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not close enough to my bed because I ain't taking a nap on anything except for my purple mattress, okay? <laughs> and if I can't do it on that, then the nap won't be had, all right? Purple mm -hmm. is improving the way we sleep with that patent technology. The purple grid is the, it's, it's the only comfort innovation that provides total pressure relief, absolute airflow, and the ergonomic support. That's because the grid's open air channels adapt to your natural shape while neutralizing body heat so you stay comfortable and cool all night long. All right. Now, I have the mattress now. We, we just got the mattress. I already have oh, really? them. Yeah. Yeah, man. I eat. Dang. Got to treat yourself a little bit, Pat. We out here working hard, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is propri proprietary technology. Mm -hmm. I, need, I needed that. All right. The purple grid is the only technology that instantly adapts. You gonna you gonna adapt when I do all of this? You already you already there? <laughs> That's how I snuggle up. It sounds <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm all about it. Every purple product ships free and is delivered right to your door. If you're not completely satisfied, you can return your product for a full refund. Mm -hmm. uh, purple is so confident in what they do. Every product comes with a risk. Free trial and purple has finances available as low as zero APR mm -hmm. uh, for qualified customers. Monthly payments are easy on your budget and there are no hidden fees. OK, mm -hmm. um, I understand that risk free trial, though, because there's there's no way I the, the, the purple that grid thing, whatever that honeycomb technology is like we don't understand it, mm -hmm. but 
I get it. Like that is the most comfortable material. It's like when after spring mattresses mm-hmm. were a thing, and then Tempur Pedic came out. Nobody really knew what that meant, but yeah. after you felt one, it was like Tempur Pedic, Tempur Pedic. This grid is it. It's like what the, I, it's what the Jetsons sleep on. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, I told y'all when I first got the purple pillow, Farron took it. She was like, this is mine now. I, didn't, I got to use it one night, Mm-mm. one night, and then she took it. Uh, so I knew it was the real deal, so I grabbed me one, and now we on the mattress, too. So um, 10% off of any order over $200 or more. Okay. Um, go ahead. Get, get a part of this, man. Be a part of this whole purple movement right now. Um, nice. Pl- um you can try purple risk free, like I said. Um, or you, if you already know this, this is something that you need in your life. Go to purple.com slash DIYS10. Uh, use the promo code DIYS10, and for a limited time, you'll get 10% off of any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash DIYS10. Use the promo code DIYS10 for 10% off any order over, uh, any order $200 or more, okay? Get nice. your sleep on. I got to get the get mattress. Get your sleep on. Ipper, 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 Ipper. I got to get the mattress. Hey, man. Well, Purple switched it up on the game, introducing the grid. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> so did uh, Capitol Police. It's uh, pretty funny because the former chief, Stephen Sund, uh, announced on Thursday that after the Wednesday riot, he turned in his resignation and had plans to be done on the 16th, which is funny. He was like, oh, I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> Um, but, uh, the Capitol has already, already found his replacement, uh, assistant chief Yogananda Pittman, wow. black woman is the new acting chief. All that happened and they didn't, <laughs> they didn't went and got a sister. Right. And once she settles in. I would like to see security. I feel like nobody's Man. getting in. <laughs> I feel like she nobody's gonna, getting in. She's going to spend a whole in. month on telling people, on teaching teaching, teaching them how to say, ah, ah, right. Like, it's a, it's a proper way. Ah, 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 Hilarious. Ah. <laughs> oh, they done locked it down. Super dope. She said she'll be leaving her role as assistant chief for protective and intelligence operations mm-hmm. uh, to be the acting chief. The level up is real. Uh, apparently she joined in 2001, uh, moved through the ranks fast, and it says Pittman was one of the first African American female supervisors to attain the rank of captain. Wow. I'm trying to see the ah, new ah. lockdown ah. measures. Ah, ah. This this is like no nonsense. Oh yeah, that smile is beautiful. She has a beautiful smile, but I I tell you when that fa- that smile fades, it's it's a, it's a lot of who you talking to. She'll she'll that. she'll she'll talk to you through her oh, teeth. Oh yeah, who you talking through the to? teeth? Yeah, yeah, that's Mm-mm. how you know it's real. She do he changed it with the who you talk in the middle of a press conference and go right back. So as I was saying, I believe mm-hmm. that if we start to implement these changes, <laughs> <laughs> keep playing with me. Keep playing with me. They the the Trumpies they got their. Uh, they got an easy one off of Steven Sund, but I would like to think that that shit is over. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to that. That's super, super dope. Miss Pittman. Captain Pittman. Let's go. Um, other than that, uh, I think that the only two stories worth talking about is the fact that uh, the rioter Richard Barnett, who was uh, seen with his feet up in mm-hmm. the desk, he's now claiming that he was pushed in. He wasn't pushed down, and his feet wasn't pushed on that desk. He did all of that free will. He did all of that free will. Everybody's backtracking now. You know, everybody's backtracking now. Mm-hmm. Like the one guy, um, he was the CEO of a marketing company, and now he's saying um, storming um, the Capitol was one of the worst decisions of his life. And it's like, oh, now, now it is? <laughs> now it is. Well, you could tell that they didn't really understand how illegal what they like what they were doing was terrorism. Yeah. But you can tell by their interviews afterwards when nobody like, what you talking about? I wasn't in there. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It was always just like we 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 went in through there and we <laughs> we we were breaking stuff and we I grabbed this thing and I took a picture. It's just like they were so proud of it and then they got them charges mm-hmm. and now they started it. I came to peacefully protest. They maced me. I didn't break in. I got pushed in. 
then he said he put a he he had a he had Nancy Pelosi's uh mail. He was like, but I paid a quarter for this. I left a quarter. I'm not a thief. It had my blood on it. Cool man. Um, but not only that. Um, one of the people who stormed in discovers he's on the no fly list. Mm -hmm. You saw I'm that. And had a, <laughs> I love it. I love to see it. It's called just. Do you got your just do? I love to see it. It's Brad Ruxdales, the CEO of a Chicago based tech company, uh, Cogencia, Cogencia, claimed attending the Capitol riot was the worst personal decision of his life. Brad, okay. guess what? Don't nobody give a fuck. <laughs> you made that conscious decision. <laughs> this happened in D.C. You are in Chicago. You made the trip. He flew there for it? He had to. He had to. Uh, He's the CEO. It's Blair a Chicago-based company. Yes. You had to, Brad. You knew what the fuck you was doing. You know what the fuck you was doing. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for you or your family. You put your family in that situation. You caused your family to be on a no-fly list. You caused your family to have to figure out what they're going to do because the job is going to, they're going to sever ties from you. They can't be tied to you. You're a domestic terrorist. Mm -hmm. They can't have you up in there in the face of the company. Oh, Brad, here's your severance pay. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. ah the tears. The tears. They're delicious. They go oh, great God. with coffee. Ah. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. oh my God. I just remember all the frustration that we were dealing with last last year and all the people who were like, right. should have done this. And, and done that. Here's the thing. I don't think they should just get fired. I really think they should. A lot of people are having legal charges brought up against them. Oh, and I think that please. is absolutely appropriate. If you don't go to jail right. for storming the Capitol building in a in a instance where people died, mm -hmm. that, I mean. I mean, we need to see hundreds of arrests. Because if the FBI is taking part in this, they have facial recognized, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, facial recognizable um equipment and data and programs give them tapes to them mm -hmm. get as many people round them up ain't that what chop <laughs> said they was yelling at string them up mm -hmm. round them up string them up yeah let's get all of them all of, all the little banter and all the little chanter let's get let's get them let's put them <laughs> all in court together send to someone this is a racketeer stick let's put them all together mm -hmm. charge them like i did bobby bobby smurder charge them like i did trey way for right? real it's great like Obviously, we're used to seeing some bullshit and, and unfair treatment, but this was like on the police side, we saw a clear black and white. We saw mm -hmm. what they did to us. We saw what they did to them. But now it's like, okay, we, we've, we've been seeing on the law side what they do to us, what they do to them. Now this is on a terrorism level. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like we did not do, we, we, we may have stormed a target. <laughs> but this is the this is supposed to be one of the most secure places in our entire country. If there aren't crazy charges come, then it's like even on a terrorist level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't even think we'd be all that surprised. But it'd still be like, fam. At least you guys see it now. It's 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 funny that it's like we've been seeing it, but in the past few years, it's like now everyone's seeing it, and everybody like even the white people are appalled. Like we are appalling. Y'all are appalling white people. They're calling them niggas. Like, look, look, look at these wiggers. Look what these wiggers out here doing. Listen. Y'all smearing shit on the walls. Capital rioters could face up to 10 years in prison under Trump's monumental executive order. Now, if you guys remember. Under uh, Trump's law. This is Trump's law. Hilarious. Because when they were pulling down the statues and he got mad and all of these Confederate statues that were uh, uh, racist as fuck and should have been down, <laughs> um, he enacted this law. This is an executive order authorizing up to 10 years in prison for injury of federal property. Well, they bust some windows up. They That's broke hilarious. some glass. They destroyed some, some desks. They Poop. took some podiums. They, they smeared feces all over walls. Poop. That sounds like you, you are entering federal property. He's so, like, but um, I didn't mean start that for people who like me. Start sentences like a teacher, okay? <laughs> Trump is like, I did not think that was going to work on white people. I meant <laughs> I was talking about BLM specific. Look at the look at look at this. Look look what they did right here. 
We're gonna figure out how to put this picture on here. Let these just flip. The thugs. Thuggeries. Thug. They should have thug life tatted on their stomach. Terrorists. They rode up there listening to the country verses of Tupac, hit them up, <laughs> and they were just they were convinced and they were motivated to but cause like, destruction. They didn't even harm. do it in a badass way. They didn't storm nothing. They asked people to let them in. Cops were moving barricades. It was just like. It was oh, it was the privilege in it. Y'all didn't mm-hmm. even get to, y'all didn't even really get your hands dirty like that. Mm-hmm. You guys just walked in a federal building and knocked some stuff over. Like this could have at least been cooler. <laughs> no, that's vi- weird to say. There's a video <laughs> going viral right now of a white guy who made so many great points. He was he was like, I'm sick of it. He got the hat on. Everybody's been reposted. I think Dia reposted in a couple other pages. But he was like, What are y'all protesting? The world is already your oyster. You already get everything you want. It's catered to you via all the entertainment from actors to music, award shows. What more do you want? That must be boring. What are you protesting? They need to shake things up. You know what I think it is? You know how like a a trend comes out, like the mannequin challenge Mm. and like black people and, you know, like young people have fun with it for a second. And then like white people start doing it. And then you kind of see that and you're like, ah. Well, that's not fine no more. I feel like that's what happened <laughs> with these protests. Like <laughs> they saw us protested and there was, you know, the the, the pictures and the, the revolution and oh, people standing on cops. We want to do that. And then they did it and it was it wasn't cool. No. They it, they were let in. They were helped doing it. It wasn't just like it, y'all smeared poop. Like it was just it was just it, was chaos. it just felt like a, another it was, it was copy chaos. It that was still organized like, chaos. This know? is whack. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like y'all are not oppressed. What are y'all? What what are you? What are you doing? Nobody stole an election. No one is 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 killing you in in record numbers for traffic stops. No one is killing you in your house while you sleep. None of this. Mm-hmm. What what are you oppressed by? What? Oh, I just I did. That's I'm baffled. <laughs> I don't know why you let it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna teach them a lesson that this is our country. This is everybody that live in country. What are you talking about? You don't have no ownership. You don't have no deeds to ah. the United States. What are you? <laughs> Said they needed seasoning on their protest. Hilarious. Oh, that's occasion. Funny. That is. Their protest had raisins, raisins in it. it? <laughs> I do like that. That is very funny. That is great. That's that's re- really what it is. Like that protest was just whack. Yeah. Like the only good pictures were also embarrassing. Oh like my BLM god. BLM has fire photography. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Even novices were out there taking shots, making them black and white. It was like, man, yes, history books. Yeah. This was just like people climbing, falling. Oh, the memes. The chants were horrible. Y'all were off time. Came by the <laughs> right? You saw the black dude that was in. FBLM and his his haircut. Is just what like, is who, happening? Who is he? Blade? What's with this haircut, buddy? How <laughs> does a black person say "fuck Black Lives Matter"? That is twisted. I mean, I I just don't even understand, man. I want to hear the. I want to, and I don't want to hear the explanation for it. It's probably just like, no, it's it's about everybody, man. It's not about. But even if you feel like it's a lot, it's about everybody. Saying "fuck back Black Lives Matter" does seem a little specific doesn't and this it? is this whole situation is stressful like that's why i say it. it's, it's stressful it's exhausting i have to take time away from it because i will literally pull my hair out mm-hmm. trying to figure out how this even makes sense and i i can't afford to i'm getting at that age where you know it, it could happen on its own i mean we already talked about it two out of three guys will experience some poor uh, some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. Uh, so I can't take any risks right now. So mm-hmm. just to be safe, actually, I'm going to go online right now, and I'm just going to order me some keeps okay. right now because the best way to prevent hair loss mm-hmm. is to do something about it while you still have it. And, guys, we hold so much of our identity wrapped up in our hair uh, from how it feels after we get a fresh cut to uh, having it perfectly styled or, you know, me, I got the sponge thing and I got the glove thing and – my hair is like my mane, like it's it's like my crown. So mm-hmm. um, when we were in our twenties and our thirties, we started noticing that the hairline it ain't as it ain't as close up to the eyebrows as it used to be. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and that's typically one of the first signs of hair loss. So 
if it definitely feels like it's panic time, then you definitely need to check out the good people over at Keeps, okay? Mm -hmm. um, used to have to go to the doctor's office for hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits, okay? Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried them before, but you never tried them at this price. And again, prevention is key. Keeps treatment typically take between four and six months, not weeks, not days, four to six months to see results. So it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. So mm -hmm. find out why Keeps is has more five-star reviews uh, than any of its competitors, and more than 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. That's a lot of people. Keeps treatments start at just $10 a month. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. $10 a month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month for free. So, uh, right now, go to Keeps, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com, slash D-I-Y-S to receive your first month of treatment for free. Again, yeah. that's Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash D-I-Y-S and you will get your first month of treatment completely for free. Um, don't waste any time, fellas. All right, don't wait till you're sitting in the barber chair and your barber, he puts the, he puts the cape on you and he looks at you like, cape. so... So what you, what you want what you want me to try to do today? Oh, don't man. don't get to that point, okay? Ah, uh, that must suck. Cause ain't no coming back from me. When, when your barber's being that real with you, that means that your girl noticed it months ago. Okay, <laughs> she just didn't want to hurt your feelings. Don't get to that point. What am I supposed to, to do with point. this? What you what you want me to try to do with this today? <laughs> yeah, that sucks. So just go ahead and and, and and hit up Keeps right now, man, and you won't be disappointed. K e e p s dot com slash d i y s and get your first month of treatment for the freezy. Love it. I feel bad for all the people who like just went bald and accepted it. And then keeps dropped, and you're just like, "Fam, well, <sighs> born in the wrong era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were born in the right one." Um, well, speaking of keeps, um, this is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> there's just there is something very very uh, special. Oh. <laughs> there's something very very special about <laughs> motherly. How do I just motherly love? Uh -huh. uh, but none is more special than the motherly love of a black mother. Um, they are pretty much willing to do whatever they need to do yeah. to keep their family together. Uh, this video, we'll put it up for you, uh, just went viral. And it's it's so amazing for a couple reasons. So this black mother with her son pulled up on this house. I'm assuming the uh, her her son's being bullied, and you always hear about people like if that were my son, I'd yada yada yada. If that were my mom, if that were that my kid, I'd yada yada yada. This is the epitome of that energy. If this were my, if that were my kid, I would blank. She lives it. Let's just let's oh, give it a watch. My Yo, so pretty much <laughs> this is a ring camera video of a woman who brought her son ready to fight yes. the parent mm -hmm. and the kid. You and your kid come out here so you can catch these hands. Both of you guys. Let's I don't go. I don't know what happened at school, but she soon realized that it was the wrong house. <laughs> and you could tell she was so Listen. ready to fight. He said it a couple times. He said, actually that's not that's not my wrong kid. Come outside. This is the wrong kid. My son's name is Caden. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. <laughs> and then the, 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 the best part is on the way out, he said, you have a blessed day. You got a package, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the saving just... face. The saving face. You got a passion right here. I just, I'm, I'm putting a little closer to the door, so you ain't even got to step outside to get us right here by your door. Um, <laughs> I feel like this oh, happens a it. lot for this little boy because he was like, "I've been trying to tell you this whole time." <laughs> You got yourself. And we at the <laughs> wrong house. You had the wrong. You got me at the wrong damn house. You got yourself at the wrong house. This is gonna be a kid that's it. gonna start calling his mother by her first name when he turns sixteen. <laughs> He's like, got, <laughs> Janet. Listen, you do this every time you get a little, little liquor in you, Janet. Oh, they. Oh she was God. ready. I love the readiness. Oh. And then the walk off. You got me at the wrong damn. Like she. she he might have got a little bit of the residual hands. Yeah. <laughs> he was, said, I've been trying to tell you this whole time. This whole time I've been trying to tell you. It was so perfectly done. I almost feel like it could be a skit. Yeah, yeah I thought that too. The girl, the, the kid was just so great. He's like, I've been trying to tell you. But if so, it, it is just some of the most authentic acting I've seen in a yeah. very long time. <laughs> the, you got a package out here, sealed the deal. Oh, man. It was already funny, but the, that right there is the, mwah, that's the French kiss right there. French chef kiss right there. So good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she did snatch him up like it was his fault, Lazy Cajun. That was all you, baby girl. That was all you. He been trying to tell you. <laughs> she probably pulled out, hopped out the car. He's like, "Mom, the house right here." No, no, come on, get out that, get out the car, cause we've been to finish this right now. Like, <laughs> I love it so it's... much. Woo, that's such a funny story to me. Okay. Oh my god. Um. So, in other news, we have some weird tattoos, right? You and yes. I get made fun of for our tattoos. Um. This one, it, uh, this is a new tattoo trend that I'm not 100 percent sure I'm jumping on board with. Uh, this is going on in Belgium. These are roof of the mouth tattoos. So no for me, dog. That looks like it hurts. First of all, you gotta sit with your mouth open um, the entire time. Oh yeah, right. Um, the 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 gut, first, I didn't know the needles were that long that they could reach inside your mouth to do that. But also, like that means that the vibration is on your lip and your Ooh, teeth or going all the, the way up your yeah, head. Like, uh, like the whole no. That's a no for me, big dog. Oh, you're gonna you're you're gonna think about that vibration. It's gonna go all through your head, and it's so dumb because it's like what what situation do you have to be in to even see these? If you're not you literally sure like, off? if you're not lit, you know how like the lip ones, like yo, I have this. Yeah. And they like literally just show you. It's like wait, look up my mouth and at my teeth, and it's like I kind of don't want to do that. Yeah. Not only that, like that typically you do stuff like that at bars and clubs and stuff like that. Number one, ain't nobody going to no bars or club right now. All right, mm -hmm. so you're just, you're just doing it in vain. Number two, when when the world opens back up, most bars and clor clubs they're dimly lit, right? Like right. It's, it's dark enough. So you got black. Like, now you're like, hold on, let me let me let me put the. Uh, you have to gargle. Uh, yeah, let me put this light up. You see the light up? <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You see it? No. And then they get a waft of that breath. <laughs> right. And you looking met around. You. Why are you showing the inside <laughs> of your mouth to me? <laughs> that is a really really bad idea. Ah, uh, I. I don't. I don't. People know. are weird. It's, it's um, a different. It's a different time and age, man. I just. I just don't. I don't. Listen. I'm not gonna knock it just because I don't understand it. I'm just gonna be like, I don't see the need for it. People are weird. But I mean, I'm sure people who first got ear piercings didn't see the the need for eyebrow, lip, nose, all of that type of stuff. No. Nah. You know, it just. I, I try to do things that. You know what? I can't even say that. I, I was gonna say that makes sense, but. It makes sense to me. It makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that like understands that, and maybe it's like a society of them. That's how you show your, you know, your alliance and your allegiance, I guess. So I, I don't know, man. That's it just... do seem like some tribal stuff, though. Yeah, low key. It's, but it's a no for me, my dog. <laughs> it seems like Ring could just start a channel. Oh, they do. The... Ring has an app. You can literally go on the Ring app and just look at other people's um, uploaded uh, rings. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really smart. Sabrina put me on that like two years ago when we were on tour the first year. And she was like, yeah, you just watch other people's rings. If you like, I guess in your neighborhood, if you mm -hmm. have a ring or have a ring account, you can just watch other people's rings and stuff like that. Only in your neighborhood or just I anybody who uploads it? I never it. did it myself. I was never that interested. But now after seeing so many of these videos. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love them because it's it's technically not an invasion of pri privacy because mm -hmm. it's it's on your, it's, you know, it's, it's pointing outwards. But... This uh this lady went uh, viral on Ring also. Uh, this is a door DoorDash driver, mm -hmm. and I this is just. She just left the order. Some of y'all so bold, man. 
Yeah, let me get to the good. So he was basically like, you can leave the leave the food. He's like, I need to speak to you. Okay, so there's, you know, maybe 30 minutes, 30 seconds, a minute more in this. Um, did she take the food? Yes, she did. So essentially, she dropped the, the, the food off. She felt like, even though it was on the map, she felt like she drove for too long. It was 40 minutes. And he gave her an $8 tip, which I don't want to throw myself out there. It's better than me. <laughs> that is better than me not at restaurants but at it when, when it comes to like you know ordering food a lot of the time that's that's a that's a that's not too bad and um she uh not only kind of like gotten got on his got on his case on on through the ring about uh how long it was she said um if you would have known how long i was driving you would have never tipped that uh and then she ended up leaving with the food where is this at let me tell you something. That it sounds like, sound like Atlanta because she said Midtown. And, okay. Uh, and that's, that's typically what they refer to Atlanta. I mean, it was a, what this area in Atlanta is called Midtown. Uh, and given that the place was only 10 to 12 miles, uh, without traffic, it should have been 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But with Atlanta traffic, it could definitely be 40 minutes. So just deducing that, it sounds like Atlanta. Mm -hmm. My thing is that. I get it. Like the same thing with Uber and Lyft. They don't tell you where the person is going until you accept the ride or you accept the order. I get oh, really? That. Yeah. They don't tell you until you, you accept don't know it? it? Yep. You okay. Don't know it. Um, however, it's it's like it's kind of one of those things that you sign up for. It's, mm -hmm. That's that's what you sign up for. Like, And I get it. Like Some people are horrible tippers. Like, I think I'm always doing Postmates, so Postmates automatically is just on 25%. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can drop it down to 20 or you can like adjust it to like a personal tip. Like mm -hmm. You get to decide what it is. So I just always tip 25% because mm -hmm. one, convenience. Two, I didn't have to do it. Three, if the order's right, oh, perfect, right? Last time I, I ordered some in Vegas, I told you guys about that. The guy drove off with six sandwiches. Yep. I found out like he just, he's like, I ain't giving you. And this was before I had even tipped. I guess <laughs> he just had predetermined that I was going to tip him crappy. And I didn't. I tipped 25%. Damn. Um, but it's one of those things you sign up for. And mm. now it's, it's becoming like even more of a, a, a double edged sword. It's one of those things we sign up for. We're going to have to deal with crazy people. You know, try to take our food because they want a bigger tip or mm -hmm. just not giving us all our food. And it sucks mm -hmm. that it is this way, but it's like, bro, like, I don't even know at this point. At this point, it's like, you know, I mean, granted, this this month we're not doing any Postmates. We're cooking all our food. Mm -hmm. We're working out more. We're doing this whole detox. And it's been great because I don't have to get the frustration of dealing with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But. I, 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 the people are just upset, bro. Like mm -hmm. the, the climate of the of, of our country right now is just a state of Weird. unrest. Weird, you know what I'm saying? And I think people don't have any. We, we're all we're all quarantining. Some people live alone. They don't have anyone to talk to. It is um, it's very difficult, man. And I think that you know, I think sometimes people feel like there's something interfering with their happiness or it's preventing them from achieving goals. Um, and I, all I can suggest is maybe trying something like BetterHelp. 
because they will assist their assess their needs and match them with their own licensed professional therapists. Mm-hmm. And in most cases, they can start communicating in under 48 hours. Nice. Uh, BetterHelp isn't a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available to we. Uh, to which may not be locally available in many areas. So um, you have an opportunity to be able to discuss things of different natures and um, you might not even have that in your hometown or it might not be available in your city or they might be overwhelmed. So this is another way to be able to talk to somebody, Mm -hmm. not have to wait two or three months before someone becomes available for you to be paired with. Um, You can... um, Services are available for clients worldwide, so you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room uh, as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy to and free to change your counselors if needed. I've told Mm -hmm. you guys before, I've been in counseling for uh, therapy for over a year and a half now, but my first two therapists, I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't click with them. It mm-hmm. wasn't until my third one that I felt a uh, real connection. I felt comfortable opening up and expressing exactly what was bothering me, my mm-hmm. fears, um, everything. So um, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, visit BetterHelp and read the testimonials that are posted daily. Uh, visit BetterHelp dot com slash DIYS that is better help B E T T E R H E L P and join the over one million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Um use our special offer, um, you know, damn it and that you scary offer and listeners, you will get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash D I Y S and that'll get you 10% off your first month. Again, go to BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash D-I-Y-S and get 10% off your first month. Don't play about your your mental health, guys. There's mm-hmm. a lot of... It's, it's weird. Like I, I talk about this all the time. Like This quarantine is confusing for a lot of people just because it's like we've never been locked in our houses, you know, locked down city. So it's, it brings up a lot of a lot of stuff you know mm. with yourself internally with the people around you in your house you know with your friends so please do not play with your mental health yeah absolutely absolutely let's talk a little bit about money i love it money love um, it, you know the you know the uh the phrase ah man that probably cost an arm and a leg mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you know that that actually has a price wait what that has a price um in the united states with you know you know you you sometimes hear about people getting kidnapped and getting organs and stuff taken away yeah it says that on average an arm and a leg is worth about three hundred and twenty three thousand ninety nine dollars in the u.s a piece like one arm one leg an arm and a leg okay pretty good okay okay all right that's kind of it's kind of messed up like why is it that expensive <laughs> that is i mean they don't just have them they'll just have them laying around i don't think so you know, you know. <laughs> but that's that's wild to think like if you ever think you're not worth anything <laughs> it's like man that's, that's just that's know it. in some markets you can get up to three hundred and twenty thousand dollars for your arm that's and or cool, leg I'm, I'm worth a cool almost a million just with my limbs, right. you know? Right. So that's just a weird a weird fact. 323,000 uh for an arm and a leg in the US. Mm. Maybe I don't know what what the limb fluctuations are at overseas. Um but somebody who is uh no stranger to money, Elon Musk, uh I don't I didn't see how this was possible, but Elon Musk literally just passed Jeff Bezos. The Amazon founder, yeah, as the richest person in the world, Elon Musk. You guys probably know him. He uh, is the founder of Tesla. Uh, he's the CEO, SpaceX, um, SpaceX, all that stuff. Uh, he is now worth a hundred and eighty-five billion dollars. Uh, what's crazy about that is that last year um, he was barely in the top fifty. He was worth twenty-seven billion, which is still 
fine with me. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I guess um, due to last Thursday's increase in Tesla's share price, it pushed Musk past Amazon, who is uh, the richest person since 2017, with eight, $184 billion. In my mind, I'm thinking 2020 is the craziest year for Amazon ever because people are just buying stuff. Um, but I guess Tesla's share price just rocketed. Uh, which increased more than ninefold over the past year uh, and added $150 billion to his net worth. That's so crazy. How much How much is too That's much so for crazy. you? Like, where would you want to cap out, if anywhere? Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm good with, like, $150, $250 million. And that's, that's, that's like, mm -hmm. that, that gives me enough money to invest in real estate, that gives me enough money to, you know, have a couple 7-Elevens open. It gives me enough uh, money to, you know, invest in a couple capital ventures uh, and live comfortably for the rest of my life and, and still be able to help people. Like, I don't need $150 million. Like, I don't need houses on both coasts. I don't need uh, luxury cars. I, I don't even, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the luxury car game anyway. Like, I like old schools. So I can, hmm. I can buy old school for... 10,000 or less and just fix it up because the fun is in fixing it up yourself. So, hmm. um, like, I don't, I don't need all that. That'd just be, uh, uh, like, the 7-Elevens would be residual income and also a way to employ people in my community. Um, the Capital Ventures would be able to make sure that I leave money behind for my kid or kids or grandkids mm -hmm. and also uh, help small businesses and new businesses get off. And so, you know, become a, uh, you know, Capital Venture for black businesses, black owned businesses. Um, hmm. so yeah, like that, that would just be able to like continue to thrive and help and help the community, man. Like I don't, I don't need that. I'd be good myself. I'd be good with like, you know, 50 mil. I'm straight with that. And that's paying off my, my houses, uh, making sure the property tax is taken care of, making sure that the cars are good, family's good. The kid can go to whatever school she wants. And also, uh, she has enough money to buy a house wherever she wants to when she's at that age. Cause mm -hmm. that's one thing we don't really have in our community is you know that generational wealth you know there are our counterparts when they're of a certain age and they're ready to buy a house they can get a loan from their parents for fifty thousand dollars seventy five thousand dollars or something like that mm -hmm. i remember reading that article about donald trump and he said my father loaned me the mod the modest sum of a million dollars for my first business like modest sum of a million dollars bro come Damn. on bro like it's so that's the fact that's that he threw in modest was you know <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Uh, so you don't, you wouldn't want to be in the billionaire club. I don't need to. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it would be nice, but that's not my, that's not my goal. That's a crazy know? amount of money. It is, it is, and I like, like you got to think about like everything that comes with that, the amount of attention that comes with that, amount of people that are like, trying to finesse it, the amount of people that are looking for a handout, the amount of family Man. members that are going to be asking, and, and everybody's response when you say no is going to be, why not? You got it. Yes. Yeah. I have it. <laughs> I do have it. A thousand I, times over. Yes, but like, and then the moment you don't give to some organization or the moment you, you do something wrong, now you have to give to an organization as an apology. And I just, I never quite understood that, like, you know, giving a monetary amount to show your support of the organization versus just saying it. But I guess, you know, actions prove louder than words so i i, get, I guess i do understand that part but it's, it seems it. like it's at at some level it it's hoarding it has to be because like once you reach a certain level mm -hmm. it's like okay if i tried to spend all of this i couldn't you know mm -hmm. but if you're walking around with a hundred a, a net worth well net worth is different because that's like everything that you have combined and stuff but let's say he had 180 billion dollars just in his bank account that is kind of crazy because you're literally just walking around with multiple countries yeah like just in your bank account has the 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 solution to helping multiple countries or mo like thousands hundreds and thousands of people probably millions and millions of people mm -hmm. and it's it's just like at some at some price and i don't know what it is maybe a billion mm -hmm. you can't spend everything if you tried like i think there, uh, i saw some like interesting like word problems about it like if you had a billion dollars you would have to spend x amount every single three seconds blah 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 blah. like yeah. they really like like break it down to like how much money that actually is so it seems like once you reach a certain like level it's just like it's kind of like hoarding i mean I, it, it is depending on what you're doing like if i had 
$185 billion. You best believe as many as I could, I'm making a ton of HBCUs D1. <laughs> I'm making sure that their endowment is straight. They ain't never got a word because the HBCUs don't get the same type of funding traditional uh, That's university the first thing you college. do. That's not one of the first things. But if I got that type of money and my business is set, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Let's start investing back in the community. Let's make sure yeah. these HBCUs are, don't keep getting overlooked because of these uh, PWIs and all of these kids want to go to these traditional colleges and universities because they're all D1. What do we need to do? to make sure that these these uh, HBCUs are now considered D1? Is it the funding? Is it the, the campuses? What, what do I need so we can make sure that when it comes time for people to think about college, they want to go here first, mm -hmm. right? And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're making it a race thing. I'm not just making it a race thing. Uh, this is a real thing. We're overlooked in a lot of areas, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to balance the scheme. And you got to understand that, like, these are marginalized uh, communities and uh, businesses that mm -hmm. are often overlooked, that don't get the same type of handouts, that don't get the same type of nods. Mm -hmm. um, somebody should. No one else is gonna do it. You think you think Jeff Bezos is gonna is gonna donate a hundred million dollars to to HBCUs? No. You think Elon Musk, even though he is from Africa originally, you think he's gonna do it? No. Mm -hmm. So yeah, somebody has to do it. So yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be all about that. So. Absolutely, Darn and, and it's not about it's not about because Kev made a video. Uh, some chick said something about him not employing enough black people on uh, with the, with the app and stuff like that. And he he made a comment about you know he's helping people in marginalized communities. And then somebody in that comment, I mean, in that that response video was like, oh, well, black people aren't the only people in marginalized neighborhoods and communities. We get that. And we're, we're not overlooking and we're not it disputing those that white already. people have uh, marginalized uh, 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 communities and, you know, they, they, they come from low-income communities as well. However, there is a uh, unsettling amount of, of, of white people that don't. We make up 13 percent, black, black, black people make up 13 percent of the United States, okay? Um, so you think about that and you think about the amount of black people that don't get brought on set that aren't on front of the camera, that aren't in behind the camera, behind the lens. Mm -hmm. Like, we're trying to balance that. And no one else is doing that actively. Well, I won't say that. There aren't a lot of companies mm -hmm. in the industry and, like, everywhere that are trying to do that. I applaud Nike for always being, like, kind of a forefront leader when it comes to equality and, and, and standing up for stuff because they're one of those big brands where we, we typically don't expect to see it from big brands. So I applaud Nike for doing that. But, yeah, if I had $150, $180 billion, I'm absolutely doing that. Absolutely doing it. So say what it's you want. a good want. little plan. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's all I'm saying is, like, you kind of have to, after after a certain level, you kind of have to turn around and figure out, like, how can I how can I like better the world around me with mm -hmm. this stuff? Cause I physically can't spend it. So it's like, unless I just spend it just so I can see if I could spend it all. Like I'm gonna buy a yacht and then a mansion and another mansion and I'm gonna put my boys in all these things, blah, 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 blah. Like mm -hmm. that stuff is cool. But like, if you have that type of money, you still have, that was, everything I named was probably less than 1 billion. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So it's 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 just like a crazy amount of i mean that, that's low key being a a superhero or a supervillain yeah since we don't have the access to powers it's really just money so if if you have 100 and something billion dollars you are either a, a hero or a villain yeah and that's really the only option and shout out to Nikki Marie cuz she just put me on the game i did not notice um but Mackenzie oh, I did hear uh, about that. Scott ex-wife of Jeff Bezos donated millions from her settlement uh, to Maryland and Virginia HBCU. So I uh, very much applaud her for that because that's she did dope. not have to do that. Did she go to one? Like, that's also uh, random. I don't think she went to one. I think she just understands that there's a need for it. You know, like, people should know this, and people do know it, but they don't do anything. But, um, yeah, this is the fifth donation in 2020 Scott has made to an HBCU. On Tuesday, she made a sizable donation of $25 million to Bowie State University. That's amazing. That's crazy. Uh, which is the largest donation in the university's history, uh, which is crazy. That's the largest donation in the university's... Uh, 25 mil. 25 mil. But let me tell y'all, uh, UCLA's endowment. This is going to blow y'all mind. Um, 
UCLA's endowment, which is the money they have in reserve for operating expense right now, is five point three thirty nine. I'm sorry, five point thirty nine billion dollars. What does that mean? That's the bank that they have. That's from people like their their alumni donating money, donating money. People donating money to the university. Why are people Doctor, still donating? Dr. Dre and uh, and Jimmy Iovine donating an entire music hall to UCLA. All that. this this is what. HBCUs are competing against. They their endowment six is, billion dollars. Their endowment is more than all the HBCUs combined endowment. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what we're competing against. Stanford what, is thirty billion dollars. USC five point seven three billion. What? Yes. So this Stanford is, is sitting on thirty billion dollars. This, this is, this is, and this is why I'm so passionate about it because I feel like I learned a lot from my HBCUs, not just education wise, but the context that what? I got for life. So, um, what? I don't, I don't get it. Why are people giving them so much money? It's the status for quo. what? I, I, I don't know, bro. What is that for? It's to keep them going, to keep them prestigious, to keep them elite. You know, so that that number is what all the staff gets paid, all the maintenance, all the everything. That's just like what all it costs that. to run it. Yeah. And Kiomi says Stanford is still charging full price tuition during the pandemic. Way to go, man. What? Way Why to, do they have to, a tuition? Way to be dickheads, even when the cards are low. <laughs> Why do they have a tuition? <laughs> I don't get it, bro. It's just. You know, I really don't get it. If you have, if you're sitting on thirty billion dollars, you could just educate people, bro. This, this is, but, but again, this is why. This is what we fight for. This is what we should be fighting for. Wow. This is this is how we keep the dollar in our own community by reinvesting in our community by making sure people go to these HBCUs, become wow. alumni, become paying alumni, make sure that we, uh, you know, suggest that our kids. And, and family members go to HBCUs, man. Damn. Bring the awareness to this type of stuff because, man, listen. I don't even know what to do with that information. Like, that's that's mind-blowing. $30 billion for a school that's already charging too much? Uh, someone said the endowment uh, is restricted and used to what the donor says. But that's 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 only when that 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 donor donates that much, right? Like, other other I think other people that donate money are... When they get it from the alumni and stuff like that, I think that you can use that as as they see fit. But I think there are certain ramifications on certain donations. But I don't know, man. That like is, it's crazy. But that is insanity. I've I've I I got nothing for that. Yeah, man. <laughs> I crazy. have nothing Shit for is that. Crazy. Well, that's man. that. That is the difference. You, you said twenty five million was the, the largest. HBC. The largest that HBCU had received ever. In a university's uh, Well, that history. was a single donation. That was a single donation. I wonder what their endowment is. Uh, let me see if I still have it up. Uh, let me see. So that was Bowie State. Let me see Bowie State University's endowment. And just look it up real quick. That's, a, that's for sure HBCU, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Endowment. 33 million now. So you got to imagine if that 33 million now, she donated 25 million. They were 8 million before. And that's that's one of Boy State is one of the bigger ones. That's one of the that's one of the bigger ones. I'm going to look up my That's crazy. My uh my university, which is a very very small university. And I can't wait to get up there and that's not a university now, man. Uh I don't even think they It's not even public. It's not, it's not even public. Look up Cal State Northridge. <laughs> How much? It's going to be $17. <laughs> nah. 129 $130 a million for Cal State. And it's crazy cuz it's like that's literally the the gap between what black people grow up seeing as rich and what white people grow up seeing as rich. Like yeah. 130 million to us growing up was like, and it still is, Ooh, but it's still right, like, right. Bam, but what we are going up against UCLA? is a dinosaur. Stanford? A dinosaur. <laughs> UCLA was five bill? 
Uh, yeah, uh, damn near six. Man. Yeah, no, it's 5.3. 5.39, so 5 billion. And USC, I think, was 6 billion. It was like 5.79. Oh Stanford my God. was, uh, what? What was Stanford? 30 billion? There's so many layers to this shit. Bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Bro, it's. Woo! And that is education. When people say that college is the biggest lick in America, I was thinking from student to college, which it still is. But there are so many layers to this. It's, that is crazy. Yeah, man. It is. Um, yeah. I'm still tripping off how mines are even up here. Like, they were just like, did you mean? <laughs> I typed <laughs> what I meant. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Ah, Did we got nothing Stanford? for you. Uh, if anybody knows uh, what the endowment uh, for Harry Stowe State University. Harry Stowe State University mission is provide an outstanding $100,000 endowment, which provides $1,000. $100,000? It says, uh, right now, Harry Stowe State University has an endowment valued at nearly $1.35 million. Okay. So $1.3 million is my, my university's endowment but that was in 2017 that only yeah. sounded good after the 100,000 though so yeah so uh that is that oof that's insane yep well check your schools check your lo local HBCUs become active then, alumni then okay. check them cuz it's not UCLA's. always about money too if you don't have the money you can volunteer Mm -hmm. uh, the more you volunteer, the less time, the less money they have to spend on people, on staff and stuff like that. So go back, uh, help your university. I know uh, Hippie Go, she uh, was telling me that she had organized like a, a run, like a marathon for her university. She went, uh, she went back and did that. It's tons of things that you could do. Go, at, go back and be active. I'm always trying to see how I can help. If you need me to promote something, I'm doing videos for HBCUs. I'm at their disposal because I understand uh, how big that gap is and i'm trying to do everything i can to try to help balance i wonder it out. why uh, that that's a noble reason for it but i wonder why rich people graduate and then turn around and just put all so much money into the school i mean is it a, is it a write-off thing is it like a pride thing yeah, part like, of his write off part of his uh, uh uh pride and then also like that keeps those universities elite mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so but listen guys we got to get up out of here because we actually have to shoot squad cast in that's like crazy 10 minutes so uh, thank y'all for crazy. watching, man. Uh, as always, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And we'll see you on another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Later, guys. Peace. Whew, that messed me up.